and welcome to the 72 PC podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. We have Eric with us this week. Yup. We have Tom with us this week. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like work has just absolutely drowned me this week. I mean, <laughs> isn't that normal for you? Would you say that it's maybe the time of the rapture? I, I would, yeah. It just it feels like I'm constantly underwater, and I, I just need to somehow get out of this. I mean, it took is, me a second to realize the bit you were doing. Is a man not entitled so. to the sweat of his brow, Tom? Uh, yeah, some days, no. Some days it just doesn't feel like it. But I, uh, I just get like it. You're just so dripping right now, like drippy everywhere. Oh, geez. I'm sorry. When I played that game, I came, like, when I stopped playing a session, I felt wet. Like, <laughs> it just, like, absolutely. <laughs> Was it because the environment or because you were sweating? Little way, Mostly little. The environment. Mostly environment. Yeah. Anybody who doesn't recognize, by the way, Tom's uh, green screen background today is Rapture from the Bioshock series of games. Which, actually, I never played two. But I played Infinite, and I played like maybe half of the first one, and they were both fantastic. The first game was amazing. The second game was fucking dog shit. And Infinite, I liked it when it came out, but in retrospect, it was kind of shitty. I mean, the game it's itself was okay, but the story was pretty cool. And the environment was really, really cool. I, I really the liked the environment. The story, yeah. the story is actually the thing I have the problem with. No, oh. <laughs> like, I thought I thought the gameplay was was fine, um, but the story th thematically, Bioshock Infinite is a fucking mess. I don't know much about it. I only played about three hours into Infinite. I watched Scott play all the way through one, and then I played most of two. Dude, just that just that first scene where you launch up into the sky oh and you God, get through the clouds so and there's the city. It is so gorgeous. It is. I actually I almost used that. I had another screenshot of that moment where you're where you first see the city of Columbia. <laughs> I almost used that one. I was like, nah, we'll do Rapture. So maybe like next week. Maybe ironic. maybe next week I'll put you in, in Columbia just because I know so that you don't like the game of, as much now. Speaking of um, some, uh, some group of people has actually been building Rapture as a Half-Life Alex series of levels. So, like, the whole first oh. part of Bioshock? Yeah. Yeah. Is that someone new? City, but, uh, <laughs> that part was creepy, I'm, man. I'm fucking excited. I am going to play through that in Ra VR. Rapture is possibly one of my favorite, uh, video game, like, worlds. It's so cool. It's so fucking cool. I mean, just the fact that it's underwater, the whole like art deco, art style, old timiness of it, the creepiness of it. I mean, it was just so, so well done. I yeah. love the era piece that they set. They did it perfect. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Like the art, the little artwork kind of shit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Bioshock, old game. Haven't played it in some yeah. time. There's a, they remastered it. Uh, what, a couple years ago or something. Mm -hmm. So that was free to anybody who owned it on Steam. So I thought about maybe trying it again at some point, but yeah, you know how that goes. So many, too many I games, too little time. I've never beat a single one of them. So what? Yeah. I've never actually beat any of them. I've watched one, I think, pretty much all the way through. Um, I got most of the way through two and then lost my disc somehow. Oh shit. <laughs> But I was clearly not enthralled enough to f find that solution, so I just kind of left it at that. Uh, yeah, no, I uh, two two just wasn't good. I don't know. I've heard, was, like, I, I don't think it was a bad game, but it wasn't good compared to one. Probably could. Maybe not. It was generic. Know. It yeah, felt generic. That's a good to way me. To put that. Was, they reused the world, and it was generic. Yeah. Actually, there was a no, DLC cool. for uh, there was a DLC for Bioshock Infinite that was uh, that takes place in mm -hmm. Rapture. Yep. People actually love that one. Apparently, I never played mm. it though. Yeah, I didn't either. I mean, Rapture's a cool fucking world. Yeah. I mean, it's a really cool world. Like you always see like sci-fi shows that have like underwater cities and stuff. And I mean, it's a game. They're always in a fucking super underwater city. Futuristic. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this one was retro, which was really fun. Like steampunk, but instead of steam, it's water. So we just water, water punk. punk. <laughs> water punk. The only water punk world. Rapture. The first water punk like game. <laughs> no. Um, but what you guys been up to this week? I don't think we've actually addressed that. Anyone do anything fun? I I have been playing and and craving old school arena shooters. Unreal Tournament, Quake. All those guys. Like, I, I want to play shooters that are old and less get you in the mindset of somebody inhabiting an underwater city and more, oh, shit, this thing moved. I better go shoot it. <laughs> That's the whole thing. That's the whole game. That's the game. What was um? What was that one you were playing? I was watching. Uh, du- was it called Dusk. Yes. I almost yes. said Duskers, I- and I realized that was not that is not the Duskers same thing. is another game that I played this week, but uh, less of that. <laughs> um but yeah, Dusk, uh, it's it's kind of modeled mostly after Quake, less Doom. Um, and you run around and you kill the people who are trying to kill you and they say heretic and then they shoot stuff at you and you shoot them first. And it's great. That's that's the game. Um, what makes it a lot of fun is that it's the biggest draw to it is quite literally the energy at which you play the game. You run at 35 miles per hour. You shoot big-ass guns. There is no reloading. There is no ammo management uh, (laughs) other than, oh, shit, I fired too many goddamn rockets, and now I can't use that anymore. Uh, It's it's great. I'm absolutely loving my time with it. Uh, No reloading? No, no reloading whatsoever. You have an ammo counter at the bottom, and it will decrease, but you do not reload, just like in Doom. It's fantastic. Wait for that matter. Yeah. (laughs) It's wonderful. So you're ready for a potential sin here, especially from someone of our era? You never, uh, played, you never played Quake? Never played Quake. That's fine. I think that's completely acceptable. I, I think, uh, believe it or not, Doom was more important to me than Quake was. Like, Quake, I played a very small amount. Of. I never got really into it. Doom, I got really into. But I think that was also the era where... Like, the the first-person shooter genre had a lot of competition. I didn't move into Quake. I moved into Unreal. Hmm. And I want to call out something that uh, Heroic was just calling out. In our school, we did play some Unreal. We um, we uh, put an install at EXE on a uh, shared drive, so we would be able to install it on all of our um, computer lab computers and play it. But nice. that was Unreal Tournament. It wasn't Quake. Yeah. I yeah, absolutely I, I loved love Unreal Tournament. Unreal Tournament was my fucking jam. I, was I never did play. At it. I never played any Unreal Tournament games, and I did really. Yeah, and the only Quake game I played was on a console you would not expect for me, and that's the N sixty four. Because shit. one of my family members had it on N sixty four, so that was Quake sixty four. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that was about the only yeah, Quake I, experience I had. When in was doubt. Pretty- when in doubt with any 64 title, you don't know what it was called. Just do franchise 64 <laughs> and you're probably right. Yeah. Because I right. really didn't know what it was called. I'm like, I think it was Quake 64, but like there was everything Quake 64. 64 Doom 64, Quest 64, Zelda 64, Mario 64. It doesn't matter. It's yeah, a 64. Exactly. Starcraft but, um, 64. But for Unreal Tournament, all you have to know is take a regular arena shooter snort a shit ton of cocaine and that's the pace that's the whole game (laughs) and what's great is that dusk feels that way and uh, what's kind of cool is i mean and i'm i'm gonna qualify this it's only kind of cool they do have their own uh multiplayer mode they have dusk world built in it's and what's kind of neat about it is it's a separate client like you click the dusk world link in the main menu Mm -hmm. and it closes and relaunches a different game so just like some of those old ones, add like separate XEs for the single player and multiplayer. It works like that. Dusk Only doesn't that's... even have a continue option. Like on your main menu, you go to load game. There is no, oh, here's your last save game. It is old school to the highest degree, um, which is pretty, pretty neat. The pixelization, you can turn up or down depending on how pixely and chunky you want those graphics. One of the settings is called Game Boy Color. Uh, which is very oh upgrade. no yeah it's uh it's super chunky um 
yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. The only downside, though, and the reason why I said it's only kind of cool, there's nobody playing Dusk World. Like there there are no servers. There's nobody nobody online. So I wasn't able to actually play that. Oh, oh. that sucks. But also, yeah. just want to call this out. I think it's cool to have to go to load game a little nostalgic. I'm yeah. not nostalgic for having separate launchers for multiplayer. Nothing <laughs> about that is cool. There's a reason that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I agree. But this is also the game where the loading screen, so there, there is only one loading screen. That's when you first launch the game. It makes old school, like, hard disk sounds. Like, you can hear it clicking, and you can hear a bunch of beeps as it's loading in, and it takes you to a fake DOS window. <laughs> and it actually lists all the assets that it's loading right then. It's very, That's very cool. old school feeling. <laughs> That's I like, I like that. that. I, li I like that. Like, that's the stuff I can get behind. It's the only load screen that you'll really see. Like, maybe a second or two of another load screen between level transitions, but that's it. Well, and it sounds it like it's levels. low. It sounds like it's low fidelity enough where you can actually probably just load it on the oh, fly. Yeah. For sure. Like, uh, it's definitely got the Quake slash, you know, N64 looking 3D models. It's nothing, uh, nothing super impressive, but... All of the enemies are visually distinct. They have visually distinct silhouettes. Um, but you walk into a room, and within half a second after scanning your, your sight line, you know exactly what you're fighting, how many there are, and the tactics that you're going to use to take them out. It's pretty cool. Um, it is definitely in, built in service of just the old school feeling of those shooters. So, um... Dobby's calling out a shooter. I want to see if you guys have played this. I, I actually got so into this. I talked about this on the castle a bit because I found a game that was a successor to that. Did you guys ever play Dinosaurs Connor or Carnivores? Dinosaur Hunter? No. Nope. It's like you you're actually hunting Karak, dinosaurs. Not, not, honestly, the only time I've Karak. ever heard of it was you talking about it. Damn it. Okay. Scott, we are the minority. I think our little niche of Bradford in our era of it is the only people that know about that fucking game. Because yeah. no one else knows about this fucking game, and it's so good. I'm sure there are. And if you've heard of this game, please shout us out on, on Twitter or something. Uh, <laughs> All 12 so, of you. Uh, there are dozens of you. <laughs> uh, dozens. Rob, Rob in our Rocket League chat is calling out, don't ban me. So Rocket League put out some interesting rules about smurfing and stream sniping, and we just, we just want to clear the air around the podcast because we want you to join this lobby. We're never going to get mad. We're never going to report you if we're streaming Rocket League. We actively want you to lobby. stream snipe us. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason Please. we're not doing private lobbies and tournaments and stuff. Yeah, like Please. fucking stream snipe us. We are never going to get mad about that. This is a feature that we want to happen. So, uh, yeah, just so. just FYI there. But, yeah, um, just wanted to actually call that out. Uh, that recent Rocket League announcement was actually kind of big. Um, yeah. It officially called out that they will never support third-party stuff on um, Epic, but they didn't explicitly say you will be banned for it. They fell short of that and said it'd be pretty much at your own risk. Yeah. So, they Bacchus mod, I would not be surprised if some people twisted Bacchus mod to get it ready for Epic, if they haven't already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and, that's so widely yeah. used by so many players. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they still say that they openly support it on Steam. It just has to follow their the Steam rules of not altering game, not being enhancing, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Which it's not. <clears throat> Box Mod's just a great fucking tool. Yeah, it's a good training tool and make your car look however you want tool. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm enough Rocket League news. That's all I had to that. But you've been playing some Rocket League, though, Tom. Like, what I is have. with you? You're on like a Rocket League grind, and you're not a Rocket League guy. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to be completely transparent, so I apologize for that. Uh, Rocket League is my one of my favorite games to play while inebriated, <laughs> by far. So last night, had, had a little bit, little bit of gin, sat here and vibed out to some music and played some, uh, some Rumble and some, uh, some Snow Day. It was fucking great. Uh, so yeah, when when I get uh, a little tipsy on the weekends, I play Rocket League. That's what I do. Nice. It's um, a really good game for that shit. Yeah, yeah. like I I love playing um, 
I love playing CSGO while tipsy, but you quickly hit that point where you're just not doing anything in CSGO. Like, you're walking and you're getting shot, and that's it. That's the whole game. But Rocket League, I feel like even if I'm flailing, I'm still having a good time, and I don't feel like too much of a detriment, especially if I'm in extra modes. Like, nobody fucking cares. It's goddamn Rumble. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. As long as everyone's okay getting their ass kicked, no one gives a shit. Yeah. Yeah. Then sure. again, some some people do get very intense when it comes to the uh, every certain, mode. Yeah, certain <laughs> like, modes and even like I always more. like I always want to win. It's not that. It's just I don't like if you're trying. I don't care. Like it's not that yeah. you're just throwing. So I'm not going to give a shit. Let's just have fun. Um, but, yeah. Robbie calls out best drunk game ever. Guitar Hero. Yeah, that's fucking great. No, I'm going to say no. Beat Saber. No, Beat Saber no. drunk is amazing. I, 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 know, can't I don't play, know about Guitar Hero. I can't play Guitar Hero drunk. I can't play a guitar really? drunk. Like Adam and I were in a band for a few years together. And I think once or twice, I not shows, just in general, tried to play drunk. And I can't do it. <laughs> I don't get how people do that shit. Yeah, I don't know. So I, I am going to say my, uh, my roommate in college, name shall not be named, when, uh, <laughs> when he was blackout drunk, like he was okay at Guitar Hero. He was fine. But when he got blackout drunk, the man could play fucking anything on any difficulty <laughs> and clear it with goddamn ease. It was amazing to watch. He became an entirely different person. That's fantastic. Zombie person was great at that. Yes. <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. There's like five people watching. I, get that. Yeah, probably yep. laughing right I only now. got to see the zombie once and it was glorious. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, let's move Adam, on. <laughs> Adam, uh, yeah. you, you do anything? Yeah, I've been getting spooky this week. I'm going oh, all shit. in on this. You know, late October, fall, it's Halloween time. I've been watching horror movies. I've been playing horror games. Uh, so I watched the first Paranormal Activity movie. Oh. And that's one of those movies that, like, it kind of came at that time where right after it came out, there was all of these found footage, like horror movies, mm. and it became this oversaturated thing and, and lots of memes and everything. But honestly, that movie is fantastic. I love that movie. I rewatched I it for the it. first time since it came out, and it, it the found footage aspect of it really, really helps it feel real. And I think the acting was actually really good, and that mm. helped that a lot. Um, I don't know if the one I watched was a sequel or not. Is that the one that had the like the pool cleaner that like just shoots out of the fucking water? No, that was with the surveillance footage. No, that was the um one of the I sequels. I think that was the second one, yeah. All right, because I enjoyed that. I can't My, remember. Uh, I think I saw the second one, but I don't remember anything about it. But but yeah, I, I think the my my favorite part of the first movie was just the pacing of the whole thing. Like they would literally show you nothing. It would yeah. just be like people sleeping in a bed uh -huh. and you would sit there, watch like, like watching what's fucking happening. enthralled for yeah. five minutes uh -huh. and nothing happens. And then like a fucking sheet falls over. You're like, oh, is it? Oh no, no, no. That guy just moved. He literally yeah, just rolled over. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a, it's a slow burner in the best way, and and everything with with how real it's you know portrayed, and that style of horror, like even as a little kid, I think of all the things that scared me the most, it was the thought of like actual demons and stuff, like Ooh. that kind of that was always way scarier to me than like any kind of slasher movie or like ghosts, but something about demons were always just terrifying to me as a kid. And I think that still a little bit is left. So when I watch movies like that, like those are the ones that get me more than, than some of the other types of horror movies. So I, I, I thought it was fantastic. I'm glad I rewatched it. Um, I like that style of horror. Yeah, that, that's my sure. style of horror. I love a good slow burn with horror. Um, the other movie I watched was it follows, which is also kind of a slow burn. I wanted to see that. I never yeah. did see it. That's a that's a really cool movie, and there's a lot of subtle stuff that if you do watch it, that I will 
point out to you afterwards and you'll find interesting um it's kind of it's kind of a slow burn it's kind of long and even like the actual concept of the demon monster whatever in the movie the it um like the mechanics of how that works in the movie i thought the concept was you know not really my thing it was fine like it works in the context of the movie but i i didn't think that was super cool but it's the execution that i thought was fantastic and it follows and it really hits this um like if you remove the specifics of the movie just the actual mechanics of this thing that is following you and it will never stop and even even if you you know do the things to make yourself safe it's only temporary and it's just constantly walking at you always everywhere and it could be anyone and that's just like that is deeply i think unsettling as a concept yes very much and sorry if i gave away too much of the movie in that description but there's no No, other way to describe it without that was pretty much in the uh previews and stuff so if you watched any previews you probably already got that yeah they they pretty much explain that like pretty like in the beginning of the movie so that's not giving away a whole lot but yeah the concept is just just really cool and the, the movie's soundtrack is incredible it was made by disaster piece which i think did uh what game was it did a game was it hyperlight drifter hyperlight drifter that or i'm, I'm talking on mute i yeah, fucking love disaster piece. i thought it yeah. was fez was it fez I thought yeah, they had something, something else. I mean, they've done Either a lot. Way. Anyways, it's like this really cool, like retro, not like cheesy synth wave, but it's got the old '80s style synthesizers and stuff, and it really fits the tone of the movie. Yeah. So, okay. look, favorite horror movie soundtrack of all time for me personally, and one of my favorite horror movies of all time. It's fantastic. I loved it. Um, Heroic Saint was calling out probably one of mine. Um. Cause the extras in family rose i remember being yeah. in high school and like as soon That's as i'd good. done watch that i'm like okay this is rooted somewhat in some real shit so like we started looking up all this different information and shit We're like okay what the hell actually happened here hmm so well yeah, i see I, in chat a quiet place is called out all right i, I went that was into really that good. movie because it's it's, it's fucking jim from the office right it's john krasinski <laughs> like come on how fucking scary can this be mm-hmm. dude he is so fucking good in that movie. And yeah, yeah it's actually scary. I fucking uh-huh. well, loved A Quiet Place. It, it had a really interesting, unique concept, a great world. The whole thing was like built and executed just fucking properly. Mm-hmm. I loved that movie. <sighs> I need to watch it. Seen it. I need to watch it. Spooky. Yeah, it's, it's up there for me. So a question. Is that actually a horror movie? Like, I'm not questioning the merits of the movie. I think it's an excellent movie, and I think that it's me shitting on stuff. But is maybe, it actually a horror movie? Maybe, like, more in line with a suspense genre or, like, a yeah. monster genre. But, yeah, I I loved like, it. And my favorite part was the world building. Yeah, because I think, like, Bird Box is more of a horror movie than Quiet Place. That's how I've I love both of those Bird movies. Box. It, it's, it's a good movie. I enjoyed it a lot. It, they they, they strike me very they strike me very similar. Yeah, sort but of. Bird Box a little more horror y, but Huh. Yeah, I'll definitely have to I give it a quiet it. place to watch. And what you brought up about John Krasinski being in it, I love finding out that some actor from like a a silly comedy or whatever role is like actually a really good perform like actor and performer. Yeah. Like the first time I watched Jim Carrey in a serious role. I was like, oh my God. what? Like the Eternal Sunshine of the haunted. Spotless Mind is like yeah, one of the saddest movies I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and he pulls Christ. it off Eternal, so well. Eternal Sunshine fucking broke me. No, but it's a fantastic down. movie. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Or love that Robin movie. Williams and What Dreams May Come. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Do you want severe depression? Because that's how you get severe depression. <laughs> also, uh, Heroic does call out John Krasinski wrote A Quiet Place. He said, oh, that's kind of cool. That That's huh. nutty. I didn't know that. But, um, we digress. Yeah, we digress a little bit. Did we yeah, get into <laughs> a, that, that was a lot of movie talk. 
That was a lot of movie talk. Yeah, we talked we about. We don't do a lot of movie talk. Yeah. Um, I also played some video games. Oh, played an, I played a what? new video game. Oh, what video game did you play? I bought Amnesia Rebirth, the sequel to Amnesia: The Dark Descent. You loved um, Amnesia, didn't you? Amnesia was really cool. Um, my the game I like from the studio is Soma. That is like one of my favorite games of all time. I liked Amnesia: The Dark Descent a lot, especially at the time because it was so kind of revolutionary the time that it came out. Um, but I never liked it as as much as Soma or some of the other um, horror games I've played. But I did want to play Amnesia Rebirth because I'm curious. And from what I understand, uh, Frictional's approach to Rebirth was very much more narrative focused than the first Amnesia, which is what intrigues me because I thought the narrative of Soma was so good. So I'm only a couple hours into it, so I don't know how good the narrative is going to be yet, but it is intriguing. Um, as far as the game itself, uh, the first game, I mean, if you liked the first game, you'll like the second game, but I don't think it's super, super different mechanically. Like, you've got your your typical, uh, you can't be in the dark without your sanity going crazy and getting attacked, so you have to, you know, really balance your resource management of matches and uh, lantern oil just like the first game. Um, I'm finding myself out of matches a lot. So it's a little, I don't want to say frustrating because like that's the point, but it is a little frustrating because I would like to see and it, it helps to solve these puzzles and physics puzzles and stuff in the game when you can actually see. <laughs> but they don't want you to see. They don't want you to see. Well, I mean, the first game... They, both games really they do a good job of not showing you too much too soon like all of the monster events in the first game were scripted and then once you encountered a monster in that specific scenario it wouldn't happen again if you died and had to replay it or something so and Ooh. and the game actively discourages you from looking at the monsters which is a good thing and i think we talked about this did we talked about it last week the concept of build um, the monster in your mind pretty yeah, much yeah yeah let you know, give you just enough information that you can scare yourself with your imagination. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of present here too. There are some things about the game that I don't love and some things that I really do love. Um, what I really like so far, it's like the, the first game was this like old Gothic castle and it was a really dark tone. This one, equally dark tone, but it's set in the desert and like these ruins and stuff and caves. So it's got this like really dark Indiana Jones vibe. Like if Indiana Jones was a horror movie, like it's got that kind of vibe, which is cool. So like the, the environment design and everything, that's all, you know, top notch. The monster design is really cool. Um, what I don't like about the game, and I can't remember if the first is like this, but there are a lot of what I would call gameplay interruptions. So a lot of the game is reading notes and letters and collectible things to, to get backstory and world building and stuff like that, which is expected. But I find that it's just too much and it's maybe just my mindset going into the game. Maybe I'm just kind of sick of that kind of thing, but I just don't want to read everything anymore. <laughs> okay, just, I, I, I know I, I, I feel that way too because uh, one of the games I really loved Horizon Zero Dawn did that with a lot of this shit mm -hmm. and eventually gets to the point where don't make me do this yeah <clears throat> yeah it's like I know that this reading all of this stuff would enhance my experience it would give me a greater understanding of the world and what we're dealing with and probably greater mystery and, and stuff that would make the you know the things happening either make more sense or be even more confusing and terrifying but it just, after a while, I'm just like, no, I don't really care. <laughs> I don't show me, like show I me the cutscenes. Give me all the cutscenes. I'm good with cutscenes, but I don't really want to read everything. So there absolutely are times when that kind of discovery is best. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times I feel it's kind of lazy because they didn't want to try to work the narrative completely in. And they just like, fuck it, we're going to dump some of this shit here. Read it yeah. at your own leisure. Yes and no. Like I, I like the idea of it because it's, all right, we're going to give you the story in form of cutscenes and gameplay, 
And then if you're really into it and you want all this, you know, backstory and, and extra, you know, extra juice, you can do so at your own leisure. Mm. So that aspect of it, I like, but there are just so many of them. And I feel like I, maybe I just feel like I have to read them all so that I know what's going on, but well, um, I think there's even better ways of handling that. Uh, prototype, back in like the mid-2000s, um, they had a shit ton of extra information to help fill in the gaps about what actually happened. Mm -hmm. And they they called it their web of entry. But like when you would, it was an active part of the game though, where like you, they would mark someone, you have to hunt them down. When you did, it would trigger like a quick 30 second cutscene, mm. If that. And it would be very descriptive about a certain thing. And then that whole web would show like how it all connected. Yeah, but that was their way to get you that extra content, so you weren't just like reading logs for like hours. Mm -hmm. And I I prefer if a game is going to do a lot of that kind of thing, at least make them audio logs where I can still walk yeah. around the game world and listen to them. Yes, um, because even even not just like the notes and stuff you find laying around in the environment, but there are like the the memories where you're. Uh, I mean, the game is Amnesia, so the basic premise is that you're in this accident or whatever, and you don't know what's happened the past few days, and your crew is gone and everything. So you gradually piece that together over time through these memory things. But it'll show you, like, a jumbled-up-looking hand-drawn picture where you can't really tell what it is exactly. And then once you get to a certain part, it'll you know, put that picture up on the screen and then like slowly reveal what it actually is. And there's usually dialogue and stuff over top of it, but you're just at the screen, looking at a static image, listening to dialogue oh. and, and exposition and stuff. And it's That's like, kind of annoying. yeah, it's like, it's another one of those things that takes me out of the gameplay. Yeah. And also there are more loading screens than I was anticipating for a game in 2020. Like really? there, yeah, there's a decent amount of loading screens, which surprised me. Huh. Hmm. Oh. And just like the, the the frequency of these interruptions are pretty often. Like there's a little bit of gameplay, and then you have to stop and watch one of those memory things, or a cutscene, or a loading screen. Even the first like big monster encounter I had in the game, the first chase sequence I had. It was like, oh, no, there's the thing. Finally, after all this tension, big chase sequence. Oh, I'm scared. I walk. I turn around. I walk down the stairs. I make a right at the corridor. At the end of the hall, there's the door. And then it's over. And then oh, it's a cutscene. And I'm just like, wait. This so is like. They, it sounds like they're trading narrative for horror. Or oh, well, la lazily trading not narrative for horror. Not, no, yeah. not, not necessarily. I don't want to say lazy, necessarily, but I, I don't know where it's going yet. Like, I don't want to prematurely judge the game or the quality of the game because there are a lot of things I, I do enjoy. Like overall, I'm still enjoying the experience. It's just these are these are the nitpicks if I had to pick them. But yeah, right. I was a little taken aback by how often I was kind of taken out. Okay, I was going to say, because I'm glad you prefaced that you actually are enjoying it, because yeah. from the last yeah, I know. <laughs> 60 seconds, I was going to ask you, are you actually going to finish this? Oh, because I'm it sure I'll finish it. Because it sound like you're enjoying it. I'm not, I'm not going to be... I mean, I don't like the Amnesia series as much as Soma. If Soma 2 came out or something, I would basically know life until it was okay. over. Uh, Amnesia, I'll take my time. I'll probably beat it um, over the course of you know a month or something. That's fair. And I'm also me, so maybe I won't beat it. I don't know. We'll see. It's always <laughs> a gamble. There, there's a difference between not being in it because you don't want to go back and not being mm -hmm. in it because you just don't go back. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, you're not making a conscious decision of, I am not going to finish this game. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, I may not get back to it. Yeah. But yeah, it does. Uh, I'm still enjoying it. And it's, you know, oozes with excellent atmosphere and world building, which is their, their kind of thing. So... We're good. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Something I've still been enjoying is uh, some Tarkov. And enjoying hey. it a little more now than I was the last time I played it. Nice. I was so, so happy to see you on and we could actually play a couple raids because it had been so long. And I know you've been playing other games and, you know, got kind of out of Tarkov a little bit. So it was cool to play a couple raids with you. 
Yeah, it was nice. I think it's been about two and a half weeks since I raided. Yeah. Um, it's been a little while. Well, they had a most recent update. They finally pushed uh, the compass, which is cool. Um, it's not a cheap, well, I mean, it's it's cheap relative to a lot of players. It's like 100K, but, isn't it? 180K? Yeah, drops. 180K compass, but you don't lose it after you buy it. So it's permanent. And um, the biggest takeaway was holy shit, people didn't piece things together properly when putting mm -hmm. together maps and they're upside down. So they have the southern part of the map upward. So now when people call out north, you have to think, are they doing the player map or are they using the compass? Yeah. So <laughs> it's 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 really interesting. And there were tells. Um, so like there's train to Tarkov, train to port, and people didn't actually think about how that lays out to the bigger map that we didn't know. And had they pieced that together, they would have known the orientation the map should have been. Mm -hmm. That said, I don't want to take away from these map creators because some of these maps are fucking excellent. They're just upside down. <laughs> um, but they've made some really cool uh, quality of life stuff. Yeah, Like you can um, go to a mag and, you know, if you have everything in cases, it could be a hassle, go to the right case, find the right type of ammo. If you right click a mag, there's a load pop-out menu. You hover over load, and it shows you all the available ammo that you have that you can load into this mag. You click it, and it automatically loads it. That is pretty Fantastic, rad. yeah. Such a nice feature. Um, I'm saying that. There was a couple more features I remembered I really liked. Um, Adam was explaining to me, and I think we had Rob have someone have this when we was running a raid. They introduced a new type of bleed they're calling heavy bleed where it takes a special item to cure, but it causes a blood trail, which is really good. And Tom, don't you fucking laugh if you're laughing about what I think you are. We are not touching that. We are not <laughs> touching that. <laughs> no, no, I was laughing because I almost stole your goal. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> no. Oh my God, where do you think my head is at? No, I tried to steal your goal and I just okay. barely fucking missed it. Good. I was laughing because where's your mute. head at, Eric? Yeah, come hey, on, man. Tom was muted and laughing his ass off. So, <laughs> but anyway, um, I the quality of life stuff they brought in was really nice. Um, Tarkov's Tarkov, it's really cool. You can see your teammates before a raid now, which is what? really cool. Yeah, shows you your actually shows everybody's loadout, yeah. and there'll be like little animations of your dude, like you know, checking the mag out and holding Ooh. his gun up and different stances and stuff. But it's, nice. it's really nice because you can see your teammates before the raid so that you won't team kill and stuff. <laughs> I mean, right? that's, so, that's yeah. going to happen. Yeah, as long as yeah, you keep track I, of where they are and where they're going. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Not my strong suit. So can we, nah, can we talk about a couple of the raids we had, though, yeah. with Rob? The fact that we almost had so many cool encounters oh. with enemies and then it, just nothing. They bitched out. Yeah. I mean, it was super frustrating. Dude, we played this raid, and everything was going pretty pretty well. And we get into this area, and, oh, there's some people on the other side. And they're kind of peeking around the door. And we're, you know, you have the, the kind of classic Tarkov doorway Mexican standoff situation, right? <laughs> and they're, they're, like, using their voice lines to try to get us to react. And we're throwing grenades back and forth. And... Rob leaves the building to go flank him, and he gets inside the building, and in, and this is over the course of what, like, fifteen minutes, maybe? Yeah, yeah, ten. Like 15 it was a minutes. long time. It was a long time. Hmm. And then he gets over into the room that they're in on the other door, and nobody's in there. It was just nothing. Like they just dipped. What? They just left <laughs> after all of that building up, after all of that tension, and then just nothing. That sucks. Same and then raid. It happened, it's like watching <laughs> yeah. five minutes of a of a horror movie, like found footage thing, and then no, nah, it's just the guy rolling over, and that's why the sheet moved. <laughs> exactly. And then Heck, the same <laughs> the same raid, where in one of the hotter parts of the map, where there's a lot of player traffic and encounters, and we get there, and. Oh, we hear somebody around the corner, and that guy like chucks a grenade at us, and we're trying to figure out where he is, and we're hearing him move around, and we we all get up to the top floor of the building, and we're trying to figure out where he is, and we can't find him, and we search around the area, can't find him, 
Rob leaves the area to an adjacent building, can't find him. He just dipped too. <laughs> like, Get everyone dipping. Fight us, please. <laughs> Would somebody please just fight us? Like we were kitted out to fight. It was what we were there to do. I yeah, like we we had decent guns and stuff. Like we were we were we we're in it. We we're good to go. And nobody wanted nobody wanted to play with us. That said, if I saw Rob coming at me, I would probably run. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like logically the their their decision to leave the fight is probably the best decision, right? They're probably really good players and they know when to take fights and when not to take fights. There're three of us and they might have been outnumbered, whatever. But like, well, man, <laughs> I'm okay with bugging fun. off. It's fun. But they build up the anticipation, especially the door standoff. They were there for so long yeah. to just fucking leave. Yeah. Like you don't sit and build up a fight for 15 minutes to just bail. Yeah. I but don't know. Maybe they realized fun. that we weren't dumb enough to just go waltzing through the door not knowing exactly where they are. And they were just like, ah, these guys these guys aren't going to fall for it. We're, let's dip. We're out of here. Yeah. As Rob called out, those standoffs, the winner is the one who's patient. Whoever Usually, walks through that yeah. fir door first is mm -hmm. normally the one that dies. Yeah. Yeah, any doorway leading into an open area and you're not 100% sure where the enemy is, like you can't you can't just walk into a door, find them and with them before they're already aiming at the door you're coming in. That's the only way into the room. Like, that's just a death wish. Yeah, Tarkov's one of those games where a stray buckshot from a shotgun will end you in yeah. one shot, mm -hmm. let alone someone who knows where the fuck you're at. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, um, Tarkov, man, th this last update was really fucking solid. A lot of quality of life stuff. Yep. I wish Big it was time. optimized a little better still, but game's great and the devs are doing great things mm -hmm. as always um yeah. yeah um i was doing some underlords a lot of underlords today actually yeah uh, dobby and i were um grinding out some of that duos i saw you guys in there all day man we we, we played a lot we played a whole lot of it it's fun i i really dig it i've been playing it off and on through the week like two weeks ago i was really busy so i was playing like 30 minutes a night but now, like, I had Scott here, and I'm like, let's get back some doubles. We were used to doing a lot of doubles. And they've added new alliances. It's really enjoyable. The only gripe I have is, man, there's some bugs there that you would expect in an early access game. Really? really? Like, they're not game-breaking. They're just annoying. Uh, like, like, there's what? certain menus that don't pop properly. Um, like, whenever Ooh. you unlock things and you go to equip them, they show you the wrong shit consistently. Oh, that's not good. But it's all cosmetic, and it's nothing that impacts the game. It's just mm. really fucking weird. And their net code, it shouldn't matter, but sometimes it does. Like on the buy rounds where you're getting items, they'll give you like a 15-second timer to buy an item. Well, or to pick an item. I waited till like 14 seconds, finally picked it, clicked it, and hit claim. And okay, I got it. All of a sudden, it didn't give me the item because I waited too long, and their net code's bad enough to where it aired on the side of I didn't choose right. That is so weird. Especially considering this is Val, right? These are the yes. people who made, you know, Counter-Strike, fucking Team Fortress. Like, this is a, you know, almost asynchronously played and trading this, card game. Like, and this is the type you know, of, <laughs> this is the type of game where air on the side of client for that kind of decision. Because yeah. it's not directly impacting an opponent. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Heroic Saints calling it point, uh, happens when you buy last second heroes too. Um, I have never been bit by the hero thing as much though. So yeah, that, that, that part's a little frustrating. That's even to the point where they can add a second buffer between buy and start a fight to where no one feels gypped because they won't see that you didn't buy it and you'll just think that you bought it so the air on the side that you bought it and done. Yeah. No one's hurt. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, the game still plays fantastic. It's a fun game. It's a good. I was gonna say good, a good thing. Even with the those bugs and stuff, like you still played it all day. So, yeah, yeah, I, I enjoy it a lot. Um, I finally got a phone again now. That I can play it on the phone, so I might play that at night before I go to bed too. Now, cool. What? I you guys have phones? Again. I had an S7, my man. Um, 
Jesus. And Underlord consistently bumped <laughs> up its specs. What are they? Eventually got to the point on. I couldn't play it. What is Samsung up to now, by the way? I'm just curious. Is, are they doing an S21 now or is it an S30? Know. I don't know the numbering system, but it's. I don't pay attention to that bullshit. This is like five gens ago phone is what I was using. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I don't use new phone. Has kept I mean, phone I don't either, that. but I try to. My grandmother traded out <laughs> phones more often than you trade out your cell phone yeah yeah i was running a fuck scene, fucking uh nexus galaxy nexus for like three years or four years mm -hmm. you'd be like both. i just didn't get rid of it yeah that's right you was running that too that's i love i love yeah i, I love my gal yeah. galaxy, galaxy nexus. nexus was fucking great i, I wish I, the pixels didn't turn so much of a samsung phone mm. yeah i, I want a bare bones pixel i don't i have the yeah. pixel 3a and i love it I, I don't was, doubt I would it was enjoy cheap. the product. I don't have to make payments on it. I just kind of own it. Um, the battery life is fantastic. I mean, if you play games and stuff like that, maybe you would be missing out. But I yeah, mean, the it's, uh, the it's everything I need in a phone. Great. And the camera yeah, is I'd... fantastic. Mm -hmm. The Samsung cameras are really good. I will say that about them. So I, I do enjoy that. It's not a Samsung phone. Oh no no! I was talking about like what I oh and what oh I what you have got gotcha. you okay yeah so like the Google Samsung and Apple have really nice ones when I was running a uh, LG it was eh because mm -hmm. I had I the uh, G two oh yeah, that's right yeah I had the I had an LG two for a little while and the camera was mediocre which I don't get like I think people understand at this point side of uh, making phone calls. A can or a phone's used most as a camera anymore. Like that's really a second functionality is take pictures. Yeah. So the camera's pretty important. I, don't, I think well, for I, a lot I, of people, their phone is their computer. Yeah. That's I know true. a guy who, uh, you know, for literally just because he takes a lot of pictures of, the, of his kids, mm -hmm. he bases his decision on what phone to buy that year from his cell phone company based purely on the people reviewing the camera literally no other feature impacts him he's like okay what's the best camera it's the iphone this year that's what i'll get or it's this thing by fucking nokia like nokia had a legit camera on the back of their android phone and it was a great little device yeah. he actually went with like uh even a windows mobile phone when it won uh like one time he went to that because it had a better camera oh. can i say i loved the idea as a windows mobile it i love that idea potential. it really did it was fucking squandered, but, you know, what else is new? <laughs> I think their attempt to make the desktop market go tiled is what really fucked them. Yeah. But Nobody liked Windows 8. Nobody liked Windows 8. Every, like, as soon as I would boot up, I was in desktop mode. Yeah. Yeah, same. That, that being said, I, I didn't mind Windows 8 that. because I just was in desktop, mo desktop mode the whole time anyway. So. Yeah. But they spent really so much money and time trying to get someone to use a feature that no one used. Yeah, that's true. No one wanted it. And that, I think that's mostly Microsoft's issue with their products is that they don't spend time to figure out, hey, does anybody actually want this shit? <laughs> they just well, they, build it. They hope for the best. They thought, you know what? We're going mobile, so let's make our desktop re re uh, represent that. It's like, no. People do like adaptive shit so it looks good on both. Mm -hmm. But you don't make it the same on both. That's not how that's supposed to work. Yeah, like, uh, fucking Microsoft is having their goddamn new Coke slash Crystal Pepsi, like, bullshit yeah. every five years. They're just like, oh, I don't know. Well, we'll change it because uh, people are really demanding new Cokes. But no, they're, they're not. They're really they not. really <laughs> fucked up the Xbox One initially with that, too. Yeah, they did. Though I heard, I heard the S is pretty good. The PS5 interface looks pretty slick. I don't know if you guys saw that. I didn't that see that, but nice. I saw the the headline. It's, it's good looking. Uh, they're giving you a lot of options without having to actually go to the main menu. Oh, okay. Which is nice. They're like essentially like, oh, you're familiar with the old Sony banner for their menu anyway. Their main mm -hmm. menu. Yeah. They're effectively just overlaying that on your current game. Oh, okay, cool. Which is, which is what they should have been doing from so the start. So basically the main menu is a pause menu. Yeah. And then you can actually go to your main menu, but you don't have to for most things. That's good. I like There's that. more to it I'm not going to get into, but I just wanted to call that out for the user interface shit. Yeah, that's neat. But um, but yeah, um, 
That's all I've really been playing. I mean, I guess I did a little Phasmophobia, and I think I played some of Tom, too. Yeah, we, but we yeah, played some. Got, we got shit RNG. Like, yeah. really shit RNG. We could not get the ghost to attack us or haunt us or anything. I, like, it, it wasn't just, like, amateur mode. Like, we were even running a couple on professional, I think, last night, and it, it was just dull. Yeah. We ran one on pro, but we did have like five in a row that were on amateur. And I think that might have had something to do with it. Yeah, probably. But like, I remember, I don't know, maybe it's just me misremembering since we've all played so much of that game. But even on amateur, like I've died before and pretty recently on one of the amateur missions. I mean, granted, it was a demon, but yeah. Yeah, yeah it, depends on what, it depends on which kind of ghost you get to. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I haven't had a demon or poltergeist in a long time and those yeah. are probably those the are two the, more active those, yeah. enjoyable ones. those are the two fun ones i think yeah i hit For level sure. 100 finally <laughs> that's insane um, I, 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 think like I, I can i can finally say though i am getting sick of the game <laughs> i'm at the point now like i've i've just i'm i'm about over it now mm -hmm. i get that if I'm they not, get more not content because, not, they'll come back yeah i just played it too much too soon and um, I've had my fill for a while. Yeah, I think I'm still in the point where I want to play it maybe like once a week a little bit, but not like big that, eight yeah. hour long sessions yeah, anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Hour long, eight hour long sessions. Yeah. David um, was a piece of shit. I agree. David was a piece yeah. of shit. Fuck David, by the way. <laughs> uh, not in the know. David was this ghost we were hunting last night. And he would not show the fuck up. And he wouldn't give us the clue. So we're just standing there like, David, either kill us or tell us who you are. Like, shit or get off the pot, man. We don't got all night. Got to the point where Tom and Chewie were trying so hard. So I got bored and I was like, I'm reading some shit. So I just pulled up an article. Excuse me. Ooh, article. <laughs> You're reading news. Yeah. Hey, what yeah, about this ghost news. that's causing havoc to this family in our, nah. you know, are okay, we gonna well, are we gonna use our expertise and make sixty dollars figuring out what kind of ghost this is? No, no. The, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the family that called us is probably a family full of fucking Karens. If we were trying <laughs> to get fucking Karens. haunt in that house, clearly David wasn't that bad of a ghost. Like I don't know, maybe he knocks something over now and again. But seriously, if he wouldn't cause us problems and we were trying to get that to happen, there's no way he was terrorizing this family. Yeah. They just yeah. didn't put them around because, like, they were bored with it or something, which I totally get. Ah, well, that said, anyone have any other games they're wanting to get to? I played an hour mm -hmm. of Quake Champions, which I didn't write down because I'm bad at my job. <laughs> um, so Quake Champions is kind of id's answer to the hero shooter and having a modern Quake for the internet age. Um, and it plays good. It feels a lot like, you know, old school Quake 3 slash Unreal Tournament 99. Um, the only twist is that the, um, God damn, I'm good at Rocket League today. Um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> the only twist is that, uh, depending on who you pick and you could have multiple copies of each like hero character per team, they have one ability that slowly refills over time. Uh, like Doom Guy, he gets the ability to run really fast while Doom music plays in the background and literally punch people to death. Uh, and it's great. Uh, BJ Blastwitz gets the ability to instantly dual wield anything he's holding. So, yeah, you're holding the rocket launcher. Cool. Hit that special. You've got two. Um, and it feels like Quake. It is super fast. It is unforgiving. I played some Deathmatch. I played some Capture the Flag. I'm having a good ass time with it. Uh, it feels like the arena shooters of old, but match made, skill based matchmaking, and just old school. Just exactly how you remember something like Unreal Tournament feeling back in the day. That's how this feels. I like it's arena free. shooters. Did I, did I mention it's fucking free? They're oh, they're doing well, the same thing that everybody else does, and they've got a battle pass and some cosmetics you can buy. But that's fucking it. Hmm. Yeah, I might check that out. It's I was never good at the OG arena shooters like Unreal and that. 
I was more of like the next evolution of the arena shooter with weapon on map shooters. Yeah. Yeah. So like UT 2004, stuff like that. Yeah. And then eventually like Halo turned into the next evolution of weapon on map. Yeah. Yeah. On, or so not yeah I, I gotta yeah. say, if you're, if you're craving some old school multiplayer shooter action, uh, quick champions feels really, really good. Okay, I might actually, especially since it's free, I might yeah. um that uh, give that a quick look. Um, but with that, if no one else has an injection, I think we're going to roll to our huge, monstrous, gigantic list of news we got for you this week. All right, so buckle up. We have got like two, probably two and a half hours worth of news to cover tonight. So I'm going to apologize in advance. <laughs> All right, oh, hold on. You meant minutes, go. right? You meant minutes? Like yeah, two and, a half minutes? Two, two and a half minutes of news. So buckle yeah, okay. the fuck up, guys. It's right. happening. <laughs> All right, what we got, Tom? Give it to us. Okay, so uh, Devolver Digital um, just decided to make a purchase. Looks like it was on sale. Uh, they bought Crotein. Um, nobody told them they could just buy Serious Sam alone, so they bought the dev studio. Um, but in all, in all reality, this is actually probably great news for Crotein. Uh, and Devolver, both companies have worked together on several games already. Uh, they're generally happy with each other. They've got the same, you know, design methodologies of just making shit ridiculous and fun. Uh, so, yeah, I'm super happy to see the Serious Sam team uh, get a company that knows them, understands them, and will fund their their cool bullshit projects. I need more well, bullshit like Serious Sam in my life. Devolver feels like the perfect publisher for Serious Sam. Yeah, they really do. It really does. Uh, usually, these stories have kind of the oh man, well Microsoft bought Bethesda. What's that gonna mean? Skyrim goes into Microsoft Office, and yeah, by the way, that's what's that's what's gonna happen. Um, but this <laughs> this is really positive. I'm super happy to see the the devs get additional funding and you know power to build the games they want to build. And Devolver have always been super chill. So match made in heaven. We'll have to see. So a quick question. At what point do we stop viewing Devolver as an indie publisher? Um, I, yeah, I don't know. Because, haven't... I mean, they, they're really starting to get big. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I, I'm not, I know that it's, there's like an arbitrary line. So like, and whatever. But I mean, they're, they're starting to get big. They've done some yeah. really big shit now. Um, yeah. I don't know. There's a line somewhere. Yeah, yeah, and it's I don't know where it is. Pretty big gray area, probably. What I yeah. generally like, like about Devolver is that it's it's weird. I get kind of the same feeling I got with Nintendo back in the day, where if it, if Nintendo published the game at all, it was generally going to be decent quality. It might not be your favorite thing, but I can't remember the last Devolver game that I have played that I've actively disliked. At the very least, it's been like, huh, that's cool. It's probably not going to last for very long, but all right. See, what I really like about Devolver is they're big enough to get shit done, but they don't feel like they're wearing suits all day. Exactly. Yeah. They feel like they do what they want to do because they like it, not because... And they gen they genuinely feel like they have a fuck the system kind of vibe to them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like whenever they do like, presentations... I was about to bring up the freaking <laughs> conferences they put on. <laughs> And, and they'll I push out stuff from genres that has been relatively dead. Like, hey, mm -hmm. who wants an NES-style Ninja Gaiden game that then turns into a Metroidvania? Oh, shit, they'll do it. What about an old-school Streets of Rage-style beat-em-up, but with a focus on, like, bump-in music like Hotline Miami has? All right, Mother Russia Bleeds? Sweet. That turned out great. They don't really care about, you know, oh, well, now we need to have a battle royale because everybody has one. Or now we need a hero shooter because Overwatch mm -hmm. came out. They just said, hey, this thing looks like a cool idea. Let's fucking see. Yeah. 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 And we need, we need those kind of publishers in that space, too. Absolutely. Like, they're still one of my favorite publishing houses. I'm just, I was just asking, like, I don't think them not being indie changes this. I'm just yeah. curious as to, like, they're, I think we're toeing the line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah but that said not important regardless they're a fucking cool dev house they picked up a really cool dev or their pub cool publishing house picked up a cool dev team yep. so kind of excited to see what they can do with it um 
do you guys have anything else you would like to add? Uh, I heard Rainbow uh, Six Siege was coming to uh, Xbox Game Pass. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, that that's a cool check for people because that that game's a lot of fun. We haven't been playing it much anymore. But that game's a lot of fun. I do want to dive yeah. back into it. I've said this like a bunch of podcasts in the row without diving back into it, I, but I do want to dive back into it at some point. But um, with that, I want to get this out there. Um, after the cast, not directly after, probably about like 10, 15 minutes, uh, we will be starting up another stream. And this is going to be a Jackbox 7 stream. So if you would like Jackbox to play Jackbox Jack. with us tonight, um, ideally jump at the Discord, because I'm also going to be simultaneously casting it to the Discord, where it'll be easier to play. But, and you can also jump in the conversation that way. We will be streaming it live to our Twitch, so you can play from that. So either be in our Twitch, be in our Discord, or be in both in about probably, I would say, 15 minutes. And we will be having a Jackbox party pack fun time. If you're not familiar with Jackbox, it's uh, a lot of cool party mini games. Um, and you don't have to own the game to play. You just need to have a web browser. You can play it on your phone. You can play it on your computer or whatever. Yep. You just need to watch us. The only person that has to on another device. Yep. The only person that has to own the game is Eric, and he does. So we are in luck. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's all we got for you this week. So for all you cool cats watching us on Twitch, um, we have stuff over on YouTube. We post up clips, few of them a week. We post up some other videos and stuff. We have content going up there, 72 Pin Connector. You go on over there, find all that fun stuff. You're over there on our YouTube. I almost said Twitch. Thank you. Awesome. But we also have a Twitch live every Saturday night at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern, where you can jump into our games, our chats, and just, just have fun with us. It's definitely the best way to consume the podcast. Also, we have a Twitter, 72PC underscore official. Go there, get plays of the day, Rocket League updates, and some other random shit that we throw every once in a blue moon. Uh, we have a Discord. Links are everywhere. On all those other places I just mentioned, they have the link there. We don't have a vanity URL yet, but it's coming. We promise. Um, finally, we have a website. It has everything there. You go to the website, you find everything you need. 72penconnector.com. All that said, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we got for you this week. So, until next week, game on. See you, everybody. Bye.